Hi. So episode three of The Acolyte has aired. The episode that it was infamous before the show even aired. Those have been the whispers. This is the episode that will divide the fan base. Divide the already divided fan base. So quarter the original fan base. But I go into things like this with the mindset of, I gotta see it for myself. Unless it's coming from a very trusted source, we're talking someone in my personal inner circle of friends who has the same taste as me. I gotta see it for myself. So I was gonna give my liver the week off. Yeah, here we are. So that's a spoiler warning as this is me talking about the episode. If you have not seen episode three of The Acolyte, as always, this is not gonna be a play-by-play. -play. Just bringing up a couple points, in fact. Just a couple things in here stood out to me. So this is the flashback episode. This takes place 15, 16 years or so in the past. These two force-wielding girls strike that thread-wielding girls. These two girls live among this coven of witches in this big stone fortress of solitude, and we get a different lesson on the force. It's not called the force, it's the thread. On the surface, I was like, I would imagine in a world of the force, in a galaxy of the force, there will be other pockets of people who use the force, call it something different. I mean, we see that with religions, right? We take the faith of Christianity. You have all these religions dealing with the same concept, but going about it a different way, saying they're the ones who have the true answer. It's a compelling enough idea to explore what would another group, another religion based around the force, how would they explore the force? However, how it's executed in the Acolyte does come across as what you knew before is not correct. The thread is the correct lore. Yeah, it's not gonna piss fans off. I mean, the twins were created with the thread. Before you have Anakin Skywalker, there was no father. Immaculate conception of the Force conceived by the midichlorians. And whether or not you liked Anakin Skywalker being space Jesus to bring balance to the Force, point is, that was a special thing. A thing that doesn't just happen. But now it happens with twins. Before it was the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise. A vague story in which it might imply Plagueis created Anakin, or maybe it was just the Force. Either way, it's an anomaly that's not usual. It's not regular. It doesn't just happen. You can't do it. Even when Anakin turns to the dark side, he's like, okay, the whole creating life thing. Let's go. Where do we start? Palpatine's like, ah, uh, this may be a bit awkward. I may have exaggerated a little bit on my ability to actually do that. To cheat death is a power only a coven of witches has achieved. What are the odds they're gonna tie this into how Shmi Skywalker actually became pregnant with Anakin Skywalker? We will see. Canon breaking, lore busting, absolutely. How would they not know that would be the case? You're taking a Star Wars moment that's, that's non-replicatable. People in that world cannot duplicate that anomaly and you're just making them replicate it. It just minimizes the Anakin Skywalker thing. Granted, the Anakin Skywalker thing and his sacrifice, bringing balance to the Force, has already been minimized because somehow Palpatine returned. Sure, friend, why not? And the thing that really bothered me in here is how the Jedi are portrayed. The Jedi just come across as weird predatory groomer monk assholes. They show up and they're like, you have force wielding children on this planet under the law of the Republic. Then the matriarch witch mom's like, we're not under the Republic. I was like, you might want to figure out uh, where your jurisdiction ends. But the point is the Jedi are like, hey, we want to talk to your kids. And the moms are like, no. So instead of fucking right off and taking no for an answer against the wishes of the parents, the Jedi just persist to talk to the kids. Dude was like, I know what you want to see. Ooh, how cool is this? Check it out. You can hold it if you want to. You can hold my really deadly laser sword. That's, dude, why would you give a kid your weapon? What if the kid was like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> For context, that is no different than being like, hey kid, you want to hold it? Ooh, check this out. It's pretty awesome. It's not real, just so you know. YouTube algorithm. So they're child napping creeps who are irresponsible with their weaponry, sure. It's like they took the joke and ran with it. You know, we've always known Jedi train at a really young age, like young Anakin Skywalker at age nine was too old. So the joke was always, oh, did Jedi just take children against their parents' wishes? Or how does it work? Someone was like, yeah, let's run with that. Make them creeps. I mean, even in Phantom Menace, Shmi Skywalker was like, Anakin, this path is laid out for you. The choice is yours. And when Anakin was all on fire, Qui-Gon's like, Anakin, that's a hard life. He just gives him that moment to back out of it and be like, yeah, maybe I don't want to do that. Qui-Gon so believed that this kid was the chosen one to bring balance to the force conceived by the midichlorians. And if Anakin didn't want to go with him, he would have been like, 
That's cool. I always thought Qui-Gon is kind of a father figure to Anakin. I felt like Shmi Skywalker felt it could be the same. Half expected Qui-Gon Jinn to lay some pipe with Shmi Skywalker and Phantom Menace. They seem to be clicking. If there was any question that Qui-Gon Jinn might have murdered Shmi Skywalker in which they covered it all up, I would see it differently. It's just how it was executed when this group of Jedi are looking for these kids and the parents are trying to hide the kids from the Jedi. Well, same energy as they say, am I right? And I'm not supposed to feel like that when it comes to Jedi, which they've been trying to destroy the Jedi for quite some time. In The Last Jedi, Luke Skywalker was like, the legacy of the Jedi's failure. And fans were like, the fuck, what? Feels like the mindset was like, well, We'll just keep showing them that. Which I will say, the Jedi being creep, we will say antagonists, is the first illustration that this takes place in an era that feels different than the prequel era. Because for all the talk of the Acolyte taking place in a different time, the High Republic, it's just felt like prequel era. If it took place during the Phantom Menace, it'd be no different. Except the zero presence of the Jedi Council, zero form of structure. Like, what did the Jedi do? What are their jobs? Granted, since the time of Return of the Jedi, Star Wars has had that famous line, moment, ideology, concept, that many of the truths we cling to depend greatly on our own point of view. We don't have to have the Jedi come across as dicks. They're villains, but perspective. Don't have heroes. Funny thing about that is whatever heroes usurp the previous heroes because the previous heroes are now villains. Those new heroes will be villains to someone else. So it just becomes some arbitrary bullshit. Like, what's the point? After that, the two sisters have a fight. The protagonist sister, who, uh, Osha, she's like, I'm gonna leave, you can't stop me. And her sister's like, I can kill you. I was like, what the fuck, man? And she apparently, sure enough, tries. She burns a book. And then a big fire starts. I have to kind of apologize at this point in the last video, I kind of went in on the fire in space. I didn't know we were dealing with the type of fire that can engulf stone and steel as though it was made out of rice paper. Maybe that kind of fire can burn in space. This big fire breaks out and Osha's like, what have you done? Her sister's like, what have you done? I wanted her to be like, dude, you locked me in my room and burned my book. You know I didn't do this shit. Which brings me to the questions because I feel like we don't have all the information in this episode. All the space witches are just dead. The fire just, you hear something shatter. You hear the lantern shatter and then the fire starts, but you don't see it happen. Big believer and if you didn't see it happen, they're probably hiding something. The options being the revenge antagonist sister just has zero accountability whatsoever. She's on this revenge quest knowing she started the fire and killed her entire family. Or the Jedi were behind it, apparently. Then all the witches are dead. Did they fight the Jedi? Did the Jedi kill them? After all this happens, it looks like the Jedi just covered it up. It's another thing I hate about this. It's, just, it's a big Jedi cover up. I mean, you don't take a 10 year vow of silence while levitating and then drink poison knowing it'll kill you if you and your crew didn't do something pretty shitty. In the end, yeah, things bothered me in this episode. Will probably bother fans. Judging by the internet chatter, Already has. Creating life twins with the force by illustrating that the true version of the force is this thread. This is lore breaking stuff. But making the Jedi come across as morally compromised assholes, that's just character assassination. But this is the same studio that turned Grand Admiral Thrawn into a fucking idiot. I'm not gonna pretend they didn't. Read Heir to the Empire. You'll see. All right, so Star Wars The Acolyte Episode 3. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Did it betray everything you think about Star Wars? Was it as bad as you heard? Was it better? Was it worse? Do you care? And do you watch Star Wars or do you watch YouTube content about Star Wars? Legitimately asking. Whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.